okay friends once again welcome to login science in today's video we are going to solve this question it's question three from november 2020 past exam paper okay the question is from dbe paper one okay the question will cover geometric series and sigma notation okay so if you haven't watched my videos on geometric series and sigma notation i'll suggest you go watch them okay I have them in the playlist called sequences and series grade 12. If you check in that playlist, you are going to find a video on sigma notation and a video on geometric series. Okay. I suggest you watch those videos before you can try to solve this question. Okay. So in this video, we are going to solve question three and we have two questions. Okay. Let's start on the next slide. Okay. Let me get the question again. It question three from November 2020 from DBE. So this is the question. We have two questions to solve. Okay. We start with 3.1. 3.1. The question says prove that you have this sigma notation. This is a sigma symbol, which is a Greek letter. The Greek letter stands for sum of, you know, this is sum of, it is a Greek letter. So you are taking the sum to infinity of this general term. Okay. And you have to prove that this is a convergent geometric series. They say show all your calculations. Okay. And the question is three marks. Okay. Remember from the lesson on geometric series, if R or the common ratio, remember R is the common ratio. If the common ratio is in between negative one and one, or in other words, let me say if R is less than 1 and R is greater than negative 1, then you know that the series is convergent. Okay. So if we can prove that R, the common ratio, is in between negative 1 and 1, then you have answered the question. Okay. So we have to find the common ratio. Okay. Before we can find the common ratio, we have to get the expansion of this sigma notation. We have to get the expansion. So in other words, we have to get the terms of this expansion. Okay. So this is the symbol or the notation that we are given. So let's get the first three terms of this notation. So we have to get what the expansion. So this is equal to, you know, this is the general term, which is written in front of the sigma symbol. Okay. To get the first term T1, you start by substituting K equal to 1. So you substitute 1 for k. This k, you are going to start from k equal to 1. You substitute there. You get your first term. And the last term is obtained by substituting what you have at the top. Always to get the last term, you substitute what you have at the top. But you can see at the top, you have the infinity symbol. So you can understand that we are taking the sum to infinity. So this is the general term. We have 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus k. Can you see now? You are going to substitute 1 for k. So it will be 2 minus 1. Okay. So this is our t1. And then plus. Now you have to get your t2. Remember you are taking the sum. This is the sum. This symbol stands for sum of. This is a Greek letter. Which stands for sum of. So you take t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 plus t5 to infinity. You are taking the sum to infinity. Okay. So let's get the second term, which is t2. So it will be 4. You're still using the same general term. It's 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus k. Now you are going to substitute 2 for k. You started substituting 1 for k. Now the next term you are going to substitute 2 for k. Okay. So you start from 1 and then 2. Okay. So this is T2 and then plus T3. So it is 4 times 3. You still use the same general term. So 3 to the power of 2 minus K. Now you are going to substitute 3 for K. Okay. I hope you can see that. You start from 1 and then 2 and then 3. And then plus to infinity. You still continue. Okay. So we are going to leave it like this. So this is T1 
T2 and T3. Okay. So you get your first three terms. Okay. So you continue. This is equal to 4 times 3. 3 to the power of what? You have 2 minus 1, which is 1. So 3 to the power of 1. And then plus 4 times 3. 3 to the power of 0. This is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Okay. 3 to the power of 0. You can see that. Plus 4 times you have 3 to the power of what? You have 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. I hope you can see that 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Plus, and so on. Okay. So, this is equal to 4 times 3 is 12. Plus, 4 times this is 1. Remember, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So, you have 1 times 4, which is 4. Okay. Plus, you have 4 over you can take this and put it at the bottom you put it in the denominator so it's going to be 3 to the power of 1 instead of 3 to the power of negative 1 now we have 3 to the power of 1 okay so you have 4 over 3 and then plus and so on okay now from here you can get what your r r which is the common ratio and you are going to check if this r is in between negative 1 and 1 if it is between negative 1 and 1, then you can see that you can conclude that the series is convergent. Okay. Let's see that. I can close this. Let me close it for now. Okay. To get your R, R is equal to, how do you get your R? When you are dealing with a geometric series, you are going to take the next term, you divide it by the previous term. Always, you take any next term, you divide it by the previous term. So I can take this which is the next term, we divide it by the previous term, or you can take this, which is the next term, we divide it by the previous term, okay, so let me take this, it will be 4 over 12, okay, so you take the next term, you divide by the previous, you can still use this one, this is also the next term, you divide by the previous, so this one, divide by this one, you still get the same value, as long as you use the next term, divide by the previous term, Okay, so you have 4 over 12, and this is equal to, when you simplify, this is equal to 1 over 3. So you divide by 4, 1, you divide by 4, 3. Okay, so this is equal to 1 over 3. And you can see 1 over 3, if you can get it in decimal, 1 over 3 is equal to 0 0.3333, right? So 0 0.3333, and you can see 1 over 3 is in between this right this is 0 comma 3 3 3 3 and then and so on it is between negative 1 and 1 you can see that and you can see from here that the series the geometric series is convergent okay you can conclude that therefore the series is convergent let's move on to 3.2 on the next slide okay now 3.2 let me get the question again it's question 3 from November 2020. Okay, this is the question. Now we are trying to solve 3.2, this one. So the question is, if this sigma notation with all these terms around is equal to 2 over 9, determine the value of P. There's P there. K is equal to P. You can see there's infinity at the top. So you are taking the sum to infinity. So let's do 3.2. This is the notation that we are given, this one, you can see k is equal to p, and then there you have infinity, you have 4 times 3. Remember this is not 4 comma 3, this is 4 times 3, just in case you don't make that mistake. This is 4 times 3. Okay, we need to determine what? The value of p. Okay, before we can determine the value of p, it is best we get the expansion of this notation. We need to get the expansion. So we need to get the first three terms you need to get the first three terms okay and then from there we are going to see if we can solve for the value of p we are given the sum to infinity is equal to 2 over 9 okay let's get the first three terms first okay this is the general term that we are given you are going to use it to get the first three terms okay so this notation is equal to you have 4 times 3 right 3 to the power of 
2 minus k, 2 minus k. Now you are going to substitute p for k, right? It is 2 minus p. Okay, so this is our t1. Now to get t2, it is plus. You still use the same general term. It's 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus. Can you see you substituted p for k? Now the next term, t2. What are you going to substitute k for? What are you going to substitute k for? Okay. So let's see. Let me show you something. Let me close this so that you understand. Let me put a line here. Let's say, for example, they say k is equal to 1. You understand that you are going to substitute 1 first. And then after that, you are going to substitute 2 and then 3 and so on, right? But in this case, you are told that k is equal to p. It means that you are going to substitute p first as we did here we substituted p first and then what are you going to substitute in the next term when you start substituting from k equal to p in the next term you are going to substitute p plus one and then the next one you are going to substitute p plus two and so on right so it is two minus k now in the place of k you have p plus one okay two minus you have p plus one so this is plus now this is your t2 now you need to get your t3 you still use the same general term it's 4 times 3 now 2 minus so it is 3 to the power of 2 minus k now what are you going to substitute k for you are going to take p plus 2 okay p plus 2 like that okay so this is your t3 plus and so on okay so you have your first three terms t1 t2 and t3 okay and this is equal to you have 4 times 3 to the power of 2 minus p like that plus you have 4 times 3 to the power of you can see you have 2 minus 1 so the negative in front of the bracket is going to affect everything there. So you are going to have 2 minus 1. You can see that 2 minus 1. So it's 1 minus P. You can see the negative in front of the bracket is affecting everything inside the bracket. Okay. Plus you have 4 times 3. 3 to the power of 2 minus 2 the negative is affecting everything inside the bracket please remember that you have 2 minus 2 which is 0 and then you have minus p so it is 3 to the power of minus p or negative p okay plus and so on i hope you understand that okay now from here you can see that this is your first term right this is your second term and this is your third term okay so remember from the lesson on geometric series this first term is equal to a so a is equal to this our first term there okay this one i hope you can remember that from the lesson we use the letter a to represent our first term let's get our common ratio which is r right r is equal to to get the common ratio which is r you always take the next term divide by the previous term always take any next term and divide it by the previous term so you can take this one you divide it by the previous term or you can take this one you divide it by the previous term so let me take this one this one you divide it by this one okay the next term divide by the previous term okay and so this four and this four will cancel right and this is equal to when you have the same basis you are going to take three to the power of this minus this remember the law of exponent when you do this you are going to end up with one over three okay when you do this this is division okay so the common ratio again is equal to one over three now we have our first term and we have our common ratio now remember from the lesson when you are taking the sum to infinity of a geometric series this is the formula that you use 
the sum to infinity like this is equal to a over 1 minus r. This is the formula that you use to calculate the sum to infinity. This is the notation for the sum to infinity. This is the notation. It is a short end for this series, right? And if you want to use the formula to calculate the sum to infinity, this is the formula you use for a geometric series. Again, this is a short end for this series. So this sum to infinity is equal to 2 over 9. Remember from the question, you are told that this sum to infinity is equal to 2 over 9. You can see 2 over 9. Okay. So the sum to infinity is 2 over 9 as you are told in the question. And this is equal to A. This is your A, right? Over 1 minus R. Your R is this. Okay, 2 over 9 is equal to, can you take this 4 and you divide it by this, what we have at the bottom there, what we have in the denominator there. So 4, you divide it by this. You can use your calculator if you want. You can use it quickly. So you have 4 there. You divide it by 1 minus I hope you can see, you can see this part, this part. That is 4 divided by this, and this is equal to 6, right? So you have 6 times this 3 to the power of 2 minus p. Okay, so this part, when you take 4, you divide it by this part, it gives you 6, and then you have times this. I hope you can see that. Okay, so we are trying to solve for p you can see from this formula we have this so from here let's try and solve for p can i get rid of this 6 i want to have this on its own this 3 to the power of 2 minus p because i'm trying to solve for p what i can do is to multiply by 1 over 6 so that this 6 and this 6 will cancel so what you do on the right you also do it on the left okay so it will be 1 over 27 and this is equal to, we have this 6 and this 6 cancelled. And we only remain with 3 to the power of 2 minus p. Okay, I hope you can see that. And you can carry on. This is 1 over, remember 27 is 3 to the power of 3. Right? This is equal to this. Okay? Right? And you can change this. Write it as 3 to the power of negative 3, like this. Right? You take it to the top. So it becomes 3 to the power of negative 3. Right? This is equal to this. Okay? What you have there. Now from here, use the law of exponent. When the bases are the same, you can equate your exponent. So you have negative 3 is equal to this 2 minus p. And so let's solve for p. You have p is equal to you take this 2 to the other side, it becomes negative 2. So you have negative 3, negative 2, which is negative 5. So you have negative p is equal to negative 5, but you want p. So p is going to be equal to 5. Okay, so this is the value of p. p is equal to 5. And we have solved for this question, question 3 from November 2020. I hope the explanation is clear. Please, I would like to see your comment in the comment section. If you find value in this video, please show that with your likes. Remember to subscribe and activate the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever new videos are released. Okay, until next time, I will talk to you soon.